Hello guys and welcome back for this new tutorial on Hollywood Illusion. Today we are going to recreate this apocalyptic shot as seen in many disastrous movies like Knowing, Greenland or Terminator. What's important to understand is that normally a lot of people are needed to create a shot like this because there are a lot of details. In this tutorial I'm going to show you a simple way to reproduce this kind of destruction scene only with your computer. If you're new to the channel, my name is Alex and my objective is to show you how to recreate iconic movie scenes with your computer. For each tutorial, you can get all the project files directly from HollywoodIllusion.com. Ok, let's jump right into it. Here is my 3D scene of a huge city. What we want is to generate a large scale fire and smoke which will completely destroy the city. We are going to work with Phoenix FD to generate this fire. Phoenix FD is a plugin for 3D Studio Max that allows you to generate fluid dynamics such as fire, smoke, liquids and even ocean waves. First of all, we need to make sure that we are working in real world scale. So for example here, the model of the city I use is 32 kilometers long. You can change the units and the size here. This is very important to make sure that the simulation is realistic. Now we need to create an emitter for the fire and then specify how the fire will move through the shot. To do that we will use the built-in tools inside of 3D Studio Max. Go to Particle Systems, select Particle Flow Source and create a source near the city. We are going to change the type to Sphere. If you move the timeline, you can already see a lot of little points coming through the sphere. Now, open the particle view. Here you can set the motion of the particles. I'm going to remove the rotation and shape operators as we don't need them. We want the particles to behave like a shock wave around the sphere. To do that, set the speed direction of the particles to icon arrow out. I will decrease the speed and add a little bit of variation. Then I'm going to increase the amount of particles to 3000. If you look at my timeline, you can see that it doesn't start at 0, but at minus 30, because during the first frames of the simulation, from minus 30 to 0, the fire and smoke will grow out to reach a large scale look, and we want the shot to start exactly when this look has been achieved. So the last step is to emit the particles only for one frame, from minus 30 to minus 29. Now our particles are traveling through the scene. As they travel, they will produce a fire and smoke and this is done using Phoenix FD. It's time to set up the simulation. We need to indicate two things to Phoenix FD to make it work. First, we need to tell Phoenix FD that we want fire coming out from these little particles here. And then we need to tell it where the simulation needs to take place. Ok, so to do that, I will first create a Phoenix FD fire source. Here I'm gonna select the particles as the source of our fire. For this scene, we only need to generate fuel. So Phoenix FD will release fuel for each little particles here, which will create fire and also smoke. And finally, I'm going to increase the motion velocity to 10. This is actually very important, because this way, the fire and smoke will inherit the motion of the particles and it will create these little bumps you can see here. Now it's time to create the simulation grid. This is where the simulation will take place. Don't worry about making it small at first, because if you make it bigger, like for example the size of the whole city, there will be a large empty space not used at the beginning of the simulation. So I'll make it small at first and then, as the fire travels through the scene, the grid will expand. To enable the expansion, just activate the option here in Grid and then select Smoke. So if the generated smoke exceeds the current grid size, it will expand. I'm just going to set a maximum expansion to avoid consuming too much memory. Now let's talk about the fire and smoke generation. Under the Fuel section, decrease the ignition temperature to 290, otherwise there won't be any fire coming out of the particles. 
if we run the simulation right now, we get this first result. As we have a lot of particles here, we need to decrease the energy released, otherwise there will be too much fire coming out of the particles. I will also decrease the fuel depletion, so the fire burns longer, and also the smoke amount produced. Finally, and this is very important, I will increase the propagation to 30. This will make the fire going up higher and produce these golden particles inside of the smoke. Ok, so the last step is to define the quality of the simulation. For large-scale simulations like this one, I recommend using the PCG symmetric conservation method. This will give a realistic motion for the fire and the smoke and boost the quality to 30. I still too bright, so I will decrease a little bit the energy released. And finally, to get the final simulation result, we need to increase the quality. To do that, go under grid and decrease the cell size. A smaller number will improve the quality of the simulation, giving it more details. But it will also increase the time needed to compute the whole simulation. Now just hit simulate, have a cup of coffee, and be patient. Ok, so that's pretty good. Now we just need to tweak the colors of the fire in order to have a beautiful render. As you can see in the simulation, the fire here is too bright compared to the rest of the fluid. So to change that, I will go to rendering and volumetric options. Here you can have a curve representing the opacity of the fire for each temperature. The more you go to the right, the higher the temperature. So to tweak the colors of the fire is pretty simple. Just set a point here and decrease the opacity of the highest temperature. And then increase the opacity of the lowest temperatures. You can also increase the opacity of the smoke to make it look fuller. Now if I render the full simulation, this is what we get. A complete apocalyptic shot with fire and smoke as seen in many famous movies. Hope you liked this tutorial guys, if you did, you can like and subscribe to support the channel and I see you soon for another exciting project.